Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Wednesday morning devotion. Thank you very much for having me. I trust that all is well, but I know that we will make the best of whatever situation we find ourselves in. Our reading for today, this, this morning, Judith 10, 1 to 23, Luke 5, 27 to 39, the appointed psalm, the psalm appointed for this morning, psalm, Psalms 101 and 109, 109, 1 to 4, and 20 to 30. Please join us in our opening hymn.
We continue with our opening sentence on page 32, then we go to page 35 of our Book of Common Prayer and continuing. Through Jesus, let us continually offer up to God the sacrifice of praise that is the tribute of lips which acknowledge his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilati. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed for this morning, 101 and 109. Psalm 101. I will sing of the mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, will I sing praises. I will strive to follow a blameless course. O, oh, when will you come to me? I will walk with sincerity of heart within my house. I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the doers of evil deeds. They shall not remain with me. A crooked heart shall be far from me. I will not know evil. Those who in secret slander their neighbors, I will destroy. Those who have a heart, haughty look and a proud heart, I cannot abide. My eyes are upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. And only those who lead a blameless life shall be my servants. Those who act deceitfully shall not dwell in my house. And those who tell lies shall not continue in my sight. 
I will soon destroy all the wicked in the land, that they may root out all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Psalm 109, begin at verse 1 to 4, and then 20 to 30. Hold not your tongue, O God, of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked, the mouth of the deceitful is open against me. They speak to me with lying tongues. They encompass me with hateful words and fight against me without a cause. Despite my love, they accuse me. But as for me, I pray for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. But you, O Lord, my God, O deal with me according to your name. For your tender mercy's sake, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I have faded away like a shadow when it lengthens. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh is wasted and gaunt. I have become a reproach to them. They seek, they see, and shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God. Save me for your mercy's sake. Let them know that this is your hand, that you, O Lord, have done it. They may curse, but you will bless. Let those who rise up against me be put to shame, and your servant will rejoice. Let my accusers be clothed with disgrace, and wrap themselves in their shame as a cloak. I will give great thanks to the Lord with my mouth. In the midst of the multitude will I praise him, because he stands at the right hand of the needy to save his life from those who would condemn him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Judith. <clears throat> Reading from the book of Judith, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1 through 23. When Judith had stopped crying out to God, the God of Israel, and had ended all these words, she rose from where she lay prostrate. She called her maids and went down into the house where she lived on the Sabbath, and on her festal days. She removed the sackcloth she had been wearing, took off her widow's garment, bathed her body with water, and anointed herself with precious ointment. She combed her hair, put on a tiara, and dressed herself in festal attire that she used to, to wear while her husband Manasseh was alive. She put on sandals on her feet and put on her anklets, bracelets, rings, earrings, and all her other jewelry. Thus she made herself very beautiful to entice the eyes of all the men who might see her. She gave her maid a skin of wine and a flask of oil and filled a bag with roasted grain and dry fig cakes and fine bread. Then she wrapped she wrapped up all her, her dishes and gave them to her to carry. Then they went out to the town gate of Bethulia and found Uzziah standing there with the elders of the town, Cherubis and Cherimis. When they saw her transforming appearance and dressed differently, they were very greatly astounded. 
at her beauty and said to her, May the God of our ancestors grant you favor and fill your plans and fulfill your plans so that the people of Israel may glory and Jerusalem may be exalted. She bowed down to God. Then she said to them, Order the gate of the town to be open for me so that I may go out and accomplish the things you have just said to me. So they ordered the young men to open the gate for her, as she requested. When they had done this, Judas went out, accompanied by her maid. The men of the town watched her until she had gone down the mountains and passed through the valley where they lost sight of her. As the women were going straight on through the valley, an Assyrian patrol met her and took her into custody. They said to her, To what people do you belong? And where are you coming from? And where are you going? She replied, I am a daughter of the Hebrews, but I am fleeing from them, for they are about to be handed over to you to be devoured. I am on my way to see Holofernes, the commander of the army, to give him a true report. I will show him a way by which he can go and capture all the hill country without losing one of his men, captured or slain. When the men heard her word and observed her face, she was in their eyes marvelously beauty, beautiful. They said to her, You have saved your life by hurrying down to see our Lord. Go at once to his tent. Some of us will escort you and hand you over to him. When you stand before him, have no fear in your heart, but tell him what you have just said, and he will treat you well. They chose from their number a hundred men to accompany her and her maid, and they brought them to the tent of Olofenes. There was great excitement in the whole camp, for her arrival was reported from tent to tent. They came and gathered around her as she stood outside the tent of Holofernes, waiting until they told him about her. They marveled at her beauty and admired the Israelites judging them by her. They said to one another, Who can despise these people who have women like this among them? It is not wise to leave one of the men alive, for if we, left, if we let them go, they will be able to beguile the whole world. Then the guards of, of Holofernes and all his servants came out and led her into the tent. Holofernes was resting on his bed under the canopy that was woven with purple and gold, emeralds and other precious stones. When they told him of her, he came to the front of the tent with silver lamps carried before him. When Judith came in the presence of Holofernes, and his servants, they all marveled at the beauty of her face. She prostrated herself and did obeisance to him, but his slaves raised her up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David, through your holy prophets. You promise of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you saw to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, they shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, 
and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, begin at verse 27 and on to 39. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi gave a banquet for him in his house. And there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table with them. The Pharisees and other scribes were complaining to his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then they said to him, John's disciples, like the disciples of the Pharisees, frequently fast and pray, but your disciples eat and drink. Jesus said to them, you cannot make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? The days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one can tear a piece from a new garment and sew it to an old garment. Otherwise, the new will be, t will be torn and the peace from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wine skin. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skin and will be spilled and the skin will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wine skins. And no one after drinking old wine desires new wine, but, say, but says, the old is good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so, my friends, I thank you for the privilege of having me share my thoughts on the, script, on the gospel reading, on today's gospel reading. I do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the scripture relates that following his healing of the paralytic, whose friends had lowered him through the roof, Jesus continued his marvelous ministry on earth. He encountered Levi sitting at a tax booth, and Jesus said to him, follow me. And he got up, leaving everything, and he followed Jesus. This call of Levi was of great significance in the ministry of Jesus. He had already called Simon Peter, James, and John. They were relatively ordinary people, fisher folk, and, but special in their own way. With Levi, there was, a, uh, there was a moving away from what appeared to be the ordinary and onto someone of official status. I need to stress here that he was no, in no way superior or more important to those previously called. But he was specific to the cause and to Jesus' cause and purpose. You see, Levi was a Jewish tax collector. He collected tax for the Roman government. He was disliked by his fellow Jews because of his collab perceived collaboration with the Roman authority, and because tax collectors involved themselves in dishonest practices. So Levi was 
a tainted public official. The scripture continues that Levi gave a great banquet for him at his house. This may have seen to be a departure from Jesus' pursuing his core purpose of preaching and teaching and healing in his ministry. To the contrary, this was an integral part of Jesus' ministry. The banquet provided Jesus with an opportunity to teach about the important aspect of his work. Here he was able to effectively proclaim the purpose of his coming. On the other hand, Levi had his reasons for hosting the occasion. Three purposes were advanced. He wanted to honor the Lord. He wanted to introduce Jesus to his friends. And he wanted to publicly declare the change in his lifestyle. To let it be known by all that he was now a follower of Christ. The banquet was attended by a large crowd of, ta of tax collectors and other si such socially group individual. And Jesus sat at the dinner table with them. Most Jews would not have done, would not have done that simply because tax, tax collectors were stigmatized as corrupt and selfish and were, and were grouped with what they call sinners. The Pharisees and scribes then complained to the disciples and inquired of Jesus, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? At this point, Jesus revealed an important purpose of his ministry by answering that those who are well need, have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And he said, I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In the course of his ministry, Jesus did not keep company, did not really keep the company of tax collectors uh, or participated in any sinful activities or do anything that would compromise his teaching and his ministry. He, however, used the opportunity to teach, to teach and to rebuke detractors and to bless those who were desirous of becoming his followers. The scribes and Pharisees were highly critical of Jesus for associating with what they considered to be despised people of the community. Jesus, however, answered their, their absurdity by pointing out his purpose for coming into the world, one which was to heal the spirit, spiritually sick and other sicknesses, normal sicknesses, and to welcome all who so ever would come to him. The Pharisees had considered themselves to be righteous and did not perceive that they were in need of spiritual healing. The tax collector and sinners understood their need to be healed and so sought the great physician. They sought to be in the company of Christ. To press their point, the Pharisees then told the disciples saying while the, press the point to say the disciples do not fast as did the disciples of John and the Pharisees. Reaching for a point, searching for a point to condemn Jesus. The Lord responded in saying that there was no need for his disciples to fast in his presence while he's with them. Here Jesus was, was associating fasting with being sorrowful or being in mourning, given an indication that the time will come when he would no longer be with them and they will have the opportunity to fast and to mourn. Such is the case of the bridegroom being present as opposed to him being absent or having left the wedding feast. Jesus then told the gathering three parables which suggested the times are changing that the new era is about to begin, but there can be no mixing of the old with the new, for one would not be compatible with the other. In fact, the first parable Jesus told, that no one tears a piece of cloth from a, 
from a new garment and sew it an old garment. Otherwise, the new will be torn and the piece from the new will not match the old. The old garment refers to the old legal system and old customs, while the new garment speaks of the era of grace which Jesus was ushering in. Any effort to mix law and grace would end in the ruin of both and of no benefit to anyone. The second spoke of putting new wine into old wineskins. The fermentation of the new wine would burst the old wineskin and spilling the wine. This speaks of the old outmoded forms of ordinances, traditions, and rituals of Judaism. These were too rigid to hold the joyful energies and exuberance of the new era ushered in by Christ. The third parable told that no one stated that no one drinking old wine desires the new wine, but says the old wine is good. This was in reference to the natural reluctance of man to ab abandon the old customs and embrace the new. Saying the old is better. This is because some find difficulty in embracing the new, having settled in their old ways. And so, my friends, Jesus used the call of Levi to demonstrate, to demonstrate that he would be willing to call into service even those scorned by society, even those rejected by society, Jesus was willing to call them into service. That he, would, that he would occupy the hearts and minds and spirit of anyone who invites him in and are not afraid to proclaim him. That he decides who will come to him and, and the negative voices of, and thoughts of man cannot deter him from welcoming any, anyone into his embrace. Jesus warned that his way Cannot, that his new way cannot coexist with the old worldly customs and ritual, for both will suffer distress. That his way cannot be contained within the confines of old habits and, and beliefs, for all will be lost. Also, that those who turn to him must be willing to totally give up that which they have grown accustomed to and embrace a new life, and a new dispensation with Christ. My friends, Jesus used the call of Levi to boldly proclaim a, train, a change in the diversity of his calling. His was to highlight the inclusiveness of his ministry, that all are welcome, even those excluded by their own societies. We are encouraged and guided to emulate Christ in our embrace of others, especially those who are ostracized by our society. My friends, do we show those of whom society despise of, do we show them that love and that embraceiveness, or do we follow, go with the flow and despise them also? You see, Jesus made a point that given a chance, given a chance, each person can validate themselves. You may very well find that if given the opportunity, everyone can make a valuable contribution to society, to our community, and even our church. As the gospel evolves, we will see how Levi turned out to be a most important member of Jesus' ministry. For in the Gospel of Matthew, Levi is identified to be Matthew. Matthew, who did so much in the ministry of Christ. Jesus used this enlistment to emphasize the new significance of his new teaching, which is in no way compatible or missable with the old teaching of Judaism. As one commentator explained, there is a, a natural reluctance of man to abandon the old for the new. The new is not always comfortable. And people, most people, hate to move out of their comfort zones. 
McDonald in a more specific, was more specific in saying that their reluctance was to their reluctance was to abandon Judaism for Christianity, to abandon law for grace and shadows. They were afraid to ab they were afraid to abandon shadows for substance. As for the performance, as for the preference for old wine over the new, one Darby contends, a man accustomed to form human arrangements, his father's religion, etc., never likes the new principle of the power of the kingdom of God. But of what importance is all of this to us today? Simply this, that the most unlikely individual that we may, be, we may encounter at times can prove themselves to, the, to be the most reliable, the most dependable. Also, Christ's teachings must be taken on its own merit and, acceptable and accepted with an open mind. My friends, to do otherwise will result in the loss of its substance and, no, and nothing worthwhile and no worthwhile benefit would be a team. May God give us his grace to accept the word of Christ unreservably and to accept it in his, on its own merit, not trying to mix it with other types of religious beliefs. The Lord be with you.
We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. By way of intercession, we continue to pray for a world, for a world gripped with so many wars, so much discontent. And we pray that the hearts of men would soften towards each other and that other ways would be found to settle disputes. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We continue to pray to God that the spread of this virus would be checked, that the lessons learned from this pandemic Would, would resonate in the hearts of men. But we pray that, we pray that the, the deaths and the suffering would cease. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We pray for the Anglican Church worldwide. We pray for the well-being of the Archbishop of Canterbury, the most, the most reverend, Justin Welby. We pray for our provincial archbishop, the most reverend Howard Gregory. We pray fervently for our own bishop, the right reverend Claude Berkeley, and we pray for his family, especially at this time. We pray for the retired bishops, Clive Calvin, Roland Clive, especially Bishop Clive in his moment of grief. May God continue to bless and keep them in their golden, in their golden days. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, today we pray for the St. Mary's Church, Takarigua. We pray for the St. Mary's Children Home, for Bishop Anstey High School East and Trinity College East. We pray for, pray for the parish priest, the Reverend Father Anderson, Dr. Anderson Maxwell, Reverend Father Titus Akbarali, Reverend Presbyter Daniel Pontifleck Andre, Reverend Rodwin Fanfier, Reverend Mark Haynes, and Reverend Carl Scipio. Remembering our former rector, Canon Jemad Hazelwood, praying that God will continue to bless him and keep him in this the golden years of his life. We bring before God the five congregations of our parish at Oropoon, St. Philip's, the Church of the Transfiguration, St. Aidan's, St. Mary's. Remembering the sick, 
praying that they make good use of this very important time to draw closer to God and to seek his mercy and forgiveness and to allow his healing, the healing grace of his son to enfold them. We pray for those who have passed, recently passed, remembering Reverend Presbyter, the former Reverend Presbyter, Edwina Peters, remembering Reverend Theodore Finley, remembering also Mrs. Abdullah. May God, may God grant them his rest. We continue, we continue with the suffrage, suffrage A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and the servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Amen. The colic is for proper 21. Found on page 179. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promise, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue... <clears throat> We continue with a prayer for the departed. Almighty God, remember before you today your faithful servants, Edwina, Theodore, and Miko. And we pray that having opened for them the gates of larger life, you'll receive them more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have faithfully served you in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue on page 45. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence greet us this close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good works we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.